What's going on everyone? It's Dungeon here and today we are going to go into the profane capital. In the last episode we went through the Irithyll dungeon in my SL1 run and by the way I did complete the SL1 run. I recorded everything so I'll soon have a video out with all that information. Um, some clips and I'll probably even do a little tip video or something like that. But that being said um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this clip. This was the one I was talking about in the last episode. Um, this is from the SL1 run. This is pretty much the Profane Capital and the uh, boss, Yorm the Giant. Um, but it's also a continuation from the last episode in multiple ways. Not only is it just a, uh, just a pure continuation, but it's also like, it's all the same... Um, it's all, all the same life. Like, I didn't warp out or anything. And that way it made it easy because all the enemies were dead when I had to go back. So, let's go ahead and get into that right now. Alright, so just like last one, I'm going to give you some commentary. This is pretty much where I left off at that bonfire. I didn't rest at the bonfire. Um, and uh, basically just continued on through the profane capital. And like I said, the reason for that is because there is an NPC that we're going to unlock literally well a couple of them actually and uh what i wanted to do was uh keep all those jailers killed so that i wouldn't have to kill them again while i go and unlock now as soon as you come to this area like it specifically that's when the um, gargoyle will attack and basically just like before the thing you got to remember is that little block that they do. If you attack them with the block, you'll get slapped if you're not ready. You know, so I attack it and move out of the way. And this should be pretty much it. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of dodging around. If they don't fly up in the air, it makes it a lot easier. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, I will say this. I actually did farm that one. Um, I got the clip for that because I, I did get the uh, gargoyle flame hammer which is a weapon that i can use on sl1 i didn't but you know i was like you know what it's a weapon that i can use and it actually does pretty good damage like upgraded all the way um it does really really nice damage and what's interesting is that if you have enough fp you can actually kill the dancer with that thing so Say, for instance, you're having a lot of trouble with the Dancer and you're doing the SL1 run, and, you know, um, you can get all the way to Irithyll, um, and you just can't kill the Dancer. You can actually get that thing and then go back to the Dancer, and you can attack the Dancer through the wall with the... Uh, it's a it's a flame I can't remember, flame frenzy or I can't remember exactly what it's called the weapon art but the weapon art will actually go through walls so I didn't do that um, but you know if you're having trouble you could do that make sure that you don't fall through there's little holes in this area so make sure you don't fall through those holes and I'll go back and show you those holes because um, it is pretty important to aggro these enemies if you're trying to get everything in the area okay it's pretty important so um let's see here so you look down in there and you can actually see those things i don't know what they're called They've got like, I don't know, like almost like arachnids or something, but they ain't because they've got a ton of legs. Probably got like eight legs on each side of their body. They're nasty, man. Whatever they are, um, try to aggro all of them. You might even be able to kill them from up here, but um, basically just I just like to aggro them so that um, I can lure them into... Uh, on these little islands down below so that you can kill them um, but you can't do that if they're all like you know laying down and then as soon as you go into the area then they'll all like summon they'll, they'll you know nasty looking things unite so if you aggro them they'll be moving around and then you can actually hit them with an arrow or a bolt and then they'll come to you so, 
And that's the last one. Uh oh. And at this point, I pretty much go back. Um, when you drop down, because you're going to have to drop down, and hopefully you don't um, miss those, uh, those uh, moss blooms, the ones at the end right down there that I got in a moment ago, make sure you get those because it's not poison down there. It's toxic. So if you use, like, a purple moss, it won't actually cure you. You have to use the blooming ones. So... And uh, you put on the silver cat ring so you don't die. Um, certainly it could be a problem if you ain't got any levels. Um, but also you can do a plunge attack, kill it. Just make sure you get out of the toxic water. Now, when you're on this little first island, it would be a good idea to make sure that there's no one going to come behind you. Because they will. They see you attacking, they hear you attacking, and they'll just come after you, actually. So, um, it'd be a good idea to do what I'm doing right here and aggro them so that they don't come and attack. And as always, fire damage does a lot to those, those creatures. So, and it's always good to, um, to do that little island next that I'm looking at right here. Because, um... That'll give you a really good, like, uh, vantage. So you don't get attacked from behind, basically. Because that's happened to me before. I, I just like, oh, there's no one coming. But then, you know, you get one of them coming over here. And then all of a sudden, you're getting attacked both ways. And um, I don't think that I've died from that before. But, I mean, you never know. So here's the usage of the um, of the priest chime. Um, again, for those who didn't see the last episode, the priest chime you can use that with a ten in faith. So you can use the weapon art, and the weapon art gentle repose will give you a, a um, regeneration. And um, I I think it's a little less than the regen spell, but it's pretty good because it uses hardly any FP so you could do it multiple times and because I didn't actually go to the bonfire and I didn't rest so I, I wanna make sure I can like you know stretch stretch out those um, health vials you know what I mean as much as I can so now the other thing is because it's toxic it does go off of poison resistance so I put on some like gear that's a little more suited to being resistant to poisons you know what I mean and that that is also good you can also put on the poison ring if you're worried about it now something that I lament is that I didn't actually put on uh, or rather memorize um, uh, caressing tears I believe that's what it's called and that's that's the one the miracle that will remove status effects so if you're toxic or poisoned or whatever you can use it it's like a really low FP too I think it's I don't know seven or ten or something it's really really low and it'll remove poison or toxic or even bleep build up curse build up any of that stuff so um, I should have put this stuff on before I even dropped down that would have been the smarter idea but, you know, that's fine. I, I had to, um, you know, heal up a little bit, as it were. So it just, you know, makes sense to go through it and get the get items that have really good poison resistance. So, and, you know, sometimes they don't look as good. But, you know, sometimes um, you'll go with the thing that looks a little nicer, that has... Um, you know some decent stats sometimes sometimes there's nothing you can do about it you know what I'm saying and uh, that kinda happens near the end when I'm fighting the last couple bosses I was like dude I gotta go with something that's gonna help me out you know cuz if, if you can get that one extra hit man that makes all the difference all the difference 
But watch out for that slow attack. You know? So, and purging stones, not only will they, um, not only will purging stones actually, um, remove curse buildup, they'll also remove hollowing. So, if you have, um, if you've died and you picked up some of those, uh, uh, I think they're sigil stones, I can't remember what they're called, but if you get those free levels from, um, I think it was a Yoria of Londor. I can't remember which one it is, the name, that you get the little hunchback dude in the corner at, at the shrine. You pick him up in the Undead Settlement, and you talk to him, and he'll give you free levels, basically. Well, if you take any of those every single time you die, you'll pick up another Hollowing. And if you pick up five of them, which is the most you can do, every time you die, you pick up five Hollowing. And if you get, I think it's like over 15 hollowing that's when you start to look like you're like dead you know but uh eh, you know it's it's whatever you can um you can always use the purging stone uh, you can buy them if you have urea you can buy them for 45 4500 i believe it is and um you can you can just build up a bunch of them and if you die or whatever you don't want to look like you know, nasty, then it's whatever, you can, you can use them, and that's cool, and for those of you who wanted to, if, if you want to kill Yuria and get her, I think it she uses the, uh, Marion blade or something like that, I don't know, whatever sword she uses, if you want to use that blade that she uses, um, you can still get the ashes and give it to the shrine handmaid, and then you can still buy those things. So don't worry about it, and any of it. Don't worry about any of the stuff that Yuria sells. You can just take her ashes and give it to um, the shrine handmaid. And uh, the only thing is that if you want to complete that quest line, then you have to wait until I think the pretty much the end of the game actually. But uh, once you're done killing the soul of Cinder, then you can go ahead and take those ashes but um and you can have the blade which something interesting about the blade i think the blade even if you have it in your offhand it'll have it has like a consecutive attack benefit or something like that so some people like to use that anyhow this is what i'm talking about with regard to um trying to lure them because there is like a little drop on the other side of the wall to the right. And, you know, I'm trying to get pretty much everything. I mean, there is something in this area that I don't get. And uh, I'll actually substitute a little clip in there so that you guys can see it. But, um, but yeah, because I don't get it in the SL1 playthrough. There, there are those really, you know, big dudes that uh, one of them drops the, I think it's the Eleonora. It's an axe that is terrible, but it, it's good for if you have, like, hollowing build. And we were just talking about hollowing. If you use hollowing gems and stuff like that, it's actually pretty good. Because hollowing gems, they scale off of luck and hollowing. So you want to be hollowed. You want to be, like, 99 hollow. Actually, I think the benefits end after, like, 15 hollowing or something like that. But, um... You, you know, you go 99, might as well. But, uh... But, yeah. So, I, I'll insert that in because... Because I didn't go into that little chapel area down below over here. You'll see where I'm at when I get there. So, before you run in there, this is what I do. Alright, this is... this is Me, personally, it's a pretty good idea. What you want to do is you get yourself statted out so that you can resist as much poison as possible that's number one and number two if there's anything that you have that can give you some measure of regen then you'll want to put that on as well because basically you're gonna get toxic like there's there's no you know way around it it's gonna happen you're gonna get toxic and Toxic does a lot more damage than poison does. So this way you can actually not really 
take a whole lot of damage you can mitigate and if you have a 10 faith you can get that priest chime and you can use the gentle repose on the left hand and you can still have a weapon in the right now if you have um yeah i'm come over here and take a look see if there's any more enemies and uh the short bow has a better distance, so that's why you see me uh, going invisible because I have the Carthus, I think it's the Carthus Milk Ring, but that'll let me use the short bow because this is a better distance when I shoot. But anyhow, uh, what I was saying is use that gentle repose in the left hand, and that will actually give you some some regen, which will allow you to be out there even longer even though you're toxic. I mean, that's basically what I did when I was going through the poison swamps in Farron, the Farron Keep, you know? And that's a really good strategy. The only thing is you obviously won't be able to have a shield in your left hand, so, you know, keep that in mind. But uh, I'm going through the options, like, you know, what what's going to give me the best bang for my buck. If you, you know, have already got the... Um, I think it's the, I don't know, what's the name of the regen ring? The ring of the firstborn sun? Or, I don't know what it's called. But the regen ring, it, it does like, I think it's like two points of regen per, um, pretty much, I think it's per second. It's quite a bit. But that, that'll that help out too if you have bountiful light, bountiful sunlight. I don't remember what it, it's the upgraded um, replenishment spell. That one is pretty good too, because I think that does eight um, hit points per um, per tick, or uh, yeah, per tick, which is I think per second. Yeah, remember you can't block, so you're gonna have to dodge out the way with that. Um, if you try to block, that's how you die. <clears throat> so um, basically, this right here is uh, what I was going for you you don't necessarily maybe you don't want it maybe you don't need it um, but that is what it is and um, basically at this point you can get that bloom moss bloom and um, I basically try to heal up and um, go through my options on you know what I'm gonna do because I was thinking I might go in that area but I decided to not. So I have it sped up right now because, I mean, you guys don't need to see me just staring out into the space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off right here. And I'm going to give you guys a clip of me going through. Alright, so this is the other clip that I have for you guys uh, because in my SL1 run, like I said a second ago, I did not go through this area. Um, there are these enemies that I just like, you know what? There's no really reason for me to come over here. You get purging stones um, and you get the Eleonora axe, which, ne neither of which, I, I, I'm not even probably going to need it for this one, this build, but, um, you know, that's whatever. I'll pick them up. And um, so, what's interesting is that in this iteration of Dark Souls um, when you use the like caressing tears or whatever it doesn't actually get rid of your buildup so um, I should have just got po or toxic so that I can get rid of that but you know it's whatever I don't and this dude seems to awaken immediately which I, I can't remember if that's normal I, I don't think that it is but um, that's fine. So, the strategy that I typically use is kill these things from a distance um, when you've got three of them. Or, if you can't get yourself inside that room. Because you do not want to fight these things in close quarters. And you don't want to fight these things in the toxic area because you'll probably... I mean, it's hard to move and you'll get toxic, so... Basically, yeah, you, you don't really want to mess with these guys. Um, they will swallow you whole and do a lot of damage. Um, but, I mean, you, you could potentially still live. It depends on how many hit points you have. But they definitely do a lot of hit points. Now, I thought that it was going to chase me out here, which usually I do. 
but for some reason it didn't. So it'll pay the iron price, if you know what I mean. Anyhow, um, I don't think I had the appropriate rings on. I, I, I think I changed up my rings at some point so I can do more damage to these guys. But you can critical hit them. Yeah, they'll they'll devour you, man. And that ain't no fun. And like I said, you um, don't want to you don't want to go in there and. Um, wake up the other two I mean that that's not good at all man because then you'll have all three chasing after you and that's really bad so um, we'll go ahead um, but just so you know if you attack one of them both are gonna wake up actually both of them wake up when you attack one Yeah, and like I was saying, when you take that Eleonora and you bring it to the uh, Pickle Pea, you, if you give the, the Pickle Pea Crow Eleonora Axe, you'll get a Hollow Gem. So, if you need those, you know. And uh, otherwise, the Eleonora Axe, I don't believe is a particularly good one in most builds. But I, if I remember looking, that there was one build that actually does work well with this thing. Um, huh. Apparently it sh shares the same name as the Edgar Allan Poe thing. Um... I guess it's got a pretty interesting uh, heavy attack. I'm looking at it right now. And, uh. <clears throat> yeah, it's. I don't know. It's not, uh. Not really particularly. Weapon. Oh boy. <laughs> Reading a uh, comment. Somebody put a Titanite slab into this thing, and they're like, oh my gosh, that was such a terrible idea. They were a noob at that time, that's what they said. But the weapon art can heal 15 uh, point hit points upon a hit. So, eh, I guess it kind of has a use, but the damage is not very good at all. I wouldn't use this thing. Anyhow... So, back to the um, SL1 run, obviously, and um, see my hit points have dropped considerably, but um, yeah, basically, these guys, w when you have enough room, they're not too terribly difficult, you just gotta be careful, you gotta be behind them, but then you gotta like move out of the way, so... Not that bad. Main thing is um, stick and move. I, you know what? I noticed this um, when I was getting that the other clip that I showed you guys a second ago. That uh, these guys have a very similar move set to the Dark Souls 2 ogres. Look at this and compare it to those ogres on the Dark Souls 2. 
and they do. They have they have a couple, I think two or three moves that are, matter of fact, more than that. A lot of moves are very similar to the ogres. The main difference is that their um, their model looks different, and uh, I imagine obviously the hitbox is different. I never noticed that before. They do the same, pretty much the same moves. They can eat you. They can um, uh, swipe at you, which is rare, actually. Um, and they can try to sit on you, and they can try to roll over on you, which is all things that the ogre does. Um, so, yeah. What's... <laughs> On, on the other uh, playthrough that I had just showed you, I actually got, when I was in the um, Irithyll dungeon, right before you leave to go to the Profane Capital, I actually got the uh, another symbol of Avarice. So that character has three, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I know some of you got, uh, guys out there don't actually have any. You know, you're probably wondering, like, dude, when am I going to get one? I mean, sometimes I've, there's been several playthroughs where I'll get a symbol of Avarice in the high wall, like with the first two, um, the first two uh, charms that you get, and you go to that the um, one that gives you the axe, the deep axe, and it'll give it to you. But that's kind of rare, though, getting it like that. Um, but I have had it. I, that's at least twice, maybe even more. And that's like twice in recent years. Um, probably I've, I've gotten it more like that. But you can do it. All right. So what the deal is with Logan? Um, look, you, you attack him. You get attacked once. Uh, SL one man. That could be it for you, man. I for real. So what I did on my other character, I put on the magic, uh, uh, magic stone ring or whatever, to try to like reduce the amount of magic damage I take. But on this one, of course, you know you saw what rings that I put on, and um, a, a little tip: if you see this ledge right here, if you go underneath the ledge, and you can get him to go underneath the ledge you go around on top and you can plunge attack him and uh, I mean obviously you could do a bunch of damage and I think that's probably the better way to go about it like not not the way that I do right here uh, I should have put the other clip because I actually did that and um, I almost like one shot of this dude but not quite uh, it does quite good you could do quite a bit of damage on a plunge attack if you imagine but um, but that's okay. You just... The thing is, is like... You, you don't want to get hit by all these attacks. You know what I'm saying? Like... Especially... The uh, homing... Soul missiles or... The homing soul missiles? I think so. I don't think... Mm, those are homing... Crystal soul No. So that right there could have done me in, man. Um, cool thing is, is, I don't believe that he heals up. Not for me, at least. Oh, well, that's awesome. That could have been it. Yeah. So then you can get the Logan Scroll. And the uh, next thing you can get is these Poison Arrows, which eh, I think 12 or something like that. 17. 18. And then um, you can, if you have done Seagward Questline, okay? If you've done that Questline. And you have actually um, a pretty 
pretty okay spell, by the way, the Miracle. Uh, Dark Souls 2 was really good, um, but, you know, whatever. If you've done Sigurd's quest line, um, then he will be up here and give you a slab. Not only that, when you go fight Yorm, he will help you. He will tag team you with Yorm, which is really cool, actually. And I pretty much always do his quest line because, you know, why not? I mean, why not? Why Why wouldn't you? I mean, unless you mess it up. That's my question for you guys. Unless you mess it up. Because I've done that a couple times. I've I've come down here. If you even go into the Irithyll dungeon before killing. Or rather, okay, so it's like this. You have to do, in certain order, you have to do these things. So, basically, you have to talk to Sigurd. Okay, um, I can't remember whether or not you have to. He has to help you in the undead settlement to kill that fire demon. I'm pretty sure you do. Um, but then, when you go to the Cathedral of the Deep, you have to give him. After you defeat the deacons, you have to give him his armor. You have to buy the armor from Grey Rat, and then you have to give it to him in that well. And then you have to talk to him. And by the way, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna inter inter interject this real quick. Use a straight sword against those guys. I was using my Lucerne against those guys, and they tore me up, bro. Like, for real. All right? I almost died. But your straight sword, I mean, so much easier. Because you use a longer weapon, it'll hit the wall. Now, the other thing I want to interject before I continue about the Seagward quest line is that you can go the other way, and it's easier. Me, I just this is what I did because... There's a couple other things you can unlock, so I unlocked all that stuff, okay? And I went back through the other way. So, I mean, you don't have to do all this nonsense, all right? You could just totally just go the regular route, okay? And it's whatever, okay? But uh, that's just what I did. It doesn't matter. You can go whichever way you want. Now, um, like I was saying, um... Basically, with Sigurd, you got to give him the armor, and then once you give him the armor, then you have to talk to him in the um, Irithyll, the Boreal Valley. Um, and be, keep in mind that if you get to the Distant Manor, Side of Grace, you do not want to go to the dungeon. If you go to the dungeon, you messed up. Alright? You totally messed up. So, don't go to the dungeon. Just go. Once you get the uh, distant manor side of grace, you just want to um, actually two, one or two things. Either you can go kill the old demon king, or uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I take that back. I'm taking that back. Once you get to the distant manor, make sure that you send Grey Rat on a pillage. Once he's gone, then kill the old demon king or kill Pontiff, one or the other. Once you do that, then Grey Rat will come back. The Onion Knight will proceed to the dungeon, and then you can come to the dungeon. Alright, so you just have to be able to kill one of those two bosses after you send Grey Rat on a pillage. Alright, and then he'll be in the dungeon, and then you unlock him from the dungeon, and then he'll proceed to the Yorm boss fight. Super cool. Not that you necessarily... The Yorm boss fight is kind of a gimmick, so it's not that you need that to, to beat Yorm, but... It's just cooler. I don't know. And, and you get, you know, the Sigurd's stuff afterwards. And you get the, the slab. So, I mean, it's like a win-win. So, anyhow, I go back to the bonfire. I rest up. I use my souls and all that junk. And I proceed to um, the next part of the capital, which is this one. Um, it always seems like there's a drop over here, but I always look, I always look, but this is, you know, this is not one. I don't know if it's in an NG Plus or something. Maybe you guys have done on NG Plus and you know offhand. Let's check it out, let me know. I know there's one on the other side. There is NG Plus when you go through this area. There is, I think it's a ring, it's on the other side. Um. Yeah. Now, I had, remember, I, I think I told you guys, I was farming these dudes. 
Not the dudes with the spears, the dudes with the hammers. And I did get a hammer. <clears throat> so. And honestly, you know, depending on what kind of weapon you have, they're not too terribly difficult. But, I mean, like I said, the main thing, you want to make sure you don't attack them when they have their, you know, kind of like their wing shield up. Um, problem with this this uh, gargoyle is that it's, uh, it's really tight quarters. So, you kind of, I mean, you could fight it right out here, you know, or you could try to, like, you know, attack it through the, the doorway. Um, or you could just decide you know not to attack it at all and just run past it but I mean I mean that definitely is the easiest way just to run through to the boss door but um, I'm not sure what what I'm even I think I'm waiting for it to turn around and just go attack it or something That could have sent me off the, the off the platform for sure. Both of those. That was kind of risky. Yeah, there's like hardly any room. Kind of makes this fight in this one kind of difficult. Just uh, make sure that you've used your souls before you come out here. Because you die and you have a bunch of stuff. And then you come over here and then those dudes are shooting fireballs at you. And then you're you know mad cuz you died it could be a bad situation real quick you know what I'm saying so just keep that in mind um, now these handmaids I really 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 wanted one of those daggers now I know that you guys are probably like those daggers suck and they do but but if you have them in your offhand alright and you um, kill an enemy it'll give you FP I think it's like one or two or three FP per kill or something like that or per hit or I don't know what it is but it'll it'll be like a FP regeneration so um, you know in a pinch could be kinda good you know what I'm saying Oh man, took a hit real bad that one. So another hit like that would do me in for sure. There you go. This guy's, this guy's messing me up, man. See what I'm saying? I try not to use any flasks because, you know, when you're in the middle of a fight, you know, you're gonna have to use those flasks. You know what I'm saying? And if you're using them all the time, like you'll be in a bad situation. You know what I mean? So I, I try to, you know, use the priest chime whenever possible. Especially because I know I'm going into a boss fight, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't trying to go through this whole area and then come back again because I ain't got enough flasks, you know? So you gotta do what you can do. What's cool is that these, these enemies are not as bad as jailers. Because the jailers, they look at you and they, you know, deplete your maximum HP. Um, these dudes, they're, they're, they're just like weak versions. The only thing that these guys can do that the jailers can't is uh, cast spells. You know, they can cast a couple of pyromancies or whatever. But it really shouldn't be any, any big worry because it's just, uh, I think it's Flame Surge and uh, fire orb which at I mean 
they're they're not very powerful spells. Let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, early on, flame a flame orb is a pretty good spell, but it might even be fireball, not even flame orb. Honestly, I don't know. So, point is. Don't worry about these guys. They're not jailers. Jailers, I would say worry about. I would say for sure. Because if they look at you, I mean, sh they, they could be it. You could die. Okay. They got the look. So, um, look, <laughs> you can go run in there and just kill them all. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, some Monty Python stuff. You know what I'm saying? Charge the castle or whatever. Um, and, uh, by the way, if you haven't seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I highly recommend you check that one out. Um, it is some British comedy, some, like, older, old school British comedy, but I assure you, I assure you it's funny. Um, especially, it's like one of those funny movies that, like, the first time you watch it, you're like, this is so dumb, you know? But then you watch it again, you're like, dude, that's so dumb, it's funny. That's how I felt with, like, Napoleon Dynamite. I don't know about you guys, if you watch Napoleon Dynamite, but... The first time I watched it, I was like, this is the dumbest movie that I have ever seen. And, uh... There was a scene in the very beginning with the, the dude, how he has that action figure... And I was like, man, that was that was so dumb. And I, after watching the movie, I was like, this is so dumb. I watched that scene again, because this is in the very beginning. I was like, man, what was that scene about? And I was trying to figure it out, so I watched it real quick. And I just started laughing. I was like, dude, this is funny. And I proceeded to watch the movie again after I had watched it the first time. And, um, man, I laughed so hard the second time I watched it. It's the strangest thing. Um, but I would probably say pretty pretty close to the same with Monty Python's. Monty Python's is is uh, has some pretty iconic scenes. I would say very iconic scenes. But uh, anyhow, I usually go through this area after killing those handmaids. You gotta drop down from above so you can get all the drops, like the um, bow and and all those things. Cause otherwise, if you just run down the stairs there, you'll have to still go back anyways. So you can drop down and get the uh, bow. But um, up ahead, there are more. There's more, more of the same. There's more handmaids. There's more gargoyles. There's one or two. I can't remember. I always forget if there's one or two over here. But. Um, Yeah, that's why I have the, uh, that's why I have the Crystal Sage, or the Crystal Rapier, uh, Crystal Sage Rapier, I don't know what it's called. So I wanted to increase my item discovery so I can get that, uh, dagger. You know what I'm saying? Um, I will say this, don't use it, like... Under most circumstances, uh, you probably don't want to use this dagger not to attack enemies. Unless you're trying to, I don't know, maybe you're doing some sort of run, some sort of, like, challenge run. Um, yeah, otherwise I wouldn't. And there it is. There it is. So I can change my stuff, take off the, uh, the gold serpent ring, which I believe the gold serpent ring at this level increases item discovery by like I don't know 75 or something like that but the plus the different you know I think there's there's three levels and they all increase oh you know it's good it's good um the problem is is they got this gargoyle man this gargoyle is a tough cookie shouldn't be it should be pretty easy honestly but I, I believe I struggle with this one as well I don't know can't remember 
Yeah, see, I got hit right there. I shouldn't have got hit. I was messing around. I need a drink up. There you go. There we go. Got a good dodge in there. But he keeps going airborne. When they go airborne, man, oh man, they got the advantage. You know, but uh, I mean, that makes sense. They can fly, you know. Like, I'm okay with that. Even though I can't fly, you know, it's all good. There we go. Yep. Okay. So, of course, I got to heal up, and in doing so, you know, basically kind of kind of just chill out for a minute, and um, you, know, you guys don't need to see all of that, so I kind of sped it up. I, I definitely, I was going through this, and um, I was like, you know what, this, this is going to take too long. So, the clip is here, it's just I, I sped it up so I can, like, you know, be not so long. Um, but, um, my strategy is to, you know, always take your time, you know what I'm saying? Just take your time, lure them in one at a time, okay? And, uh, you shoot, uh, a crossbow at one or two of them, and, um... Or, or you... A, a full-on attack one or two of them as long as you're quiet um, you probably won't aggro all of them see how I did that there and uh, what I should I think I backstab I don't know uh, there's a few of them coming after me now yeah you don't want to fight more than like one or two Two's not so bad. They're not difficult enemies, but three. I mean, if you're trying not to get hit, I wouldn't. And look, I'll be honest, man. They're, I get a better appreciation for the bastard, or uh, not the bastard, the um, broadsword move set. That charge heavy attack. I never knew it had so much poise until I did a review. Uh, I think it was the strength video. I, I was like, dang, dude, this this uh, sword actually has quite a bit of poise on the charge heavy. Um, which is kind of cool. And that's cool. It kind of lays them out. Gives you a little reprieve, you know. Anyhow, um, here's the trouble. <laughs> trouble is... You do not want to fight, I mean, shoot, fighting one mimic chest is going to be tough enough, but fighting two, you, that's, that's it, you're going to die, alright? Oh, and then I didn't have the right thing on there, I got so lucky right there, you guys, so lucky, that should have done me in. So, basically, here's the trouble. Basically, um, I mean, you gotta like, you know, heal up and stuff. But the thing is, if you take a look, when they wake up, they're gonna look for me again. Watch. I was gonna speed this up, but I was like, nah, man, they need to see this. What's interesting is that if you aggro a mimic chest, they will follow you, but then if they de aggro, They'll kind of walk back a little bit, and then they'll actually go back to sleep. And they'll close up. The chest will close up. And um, and you can go over there and get some free licks in. You know? So even if you don't have uh, a undead... I think it's undead hunter charm. If you don't have an undead hunter charm, you could get a, like one or two hits in. And then, you know, get the heck out of dodge hide somewhere and as long as you don't attack them too many times before you leave okay as long as you can attack them maybe twice and then run away so that by the time they wake up you're already like down the hall they'll try to follow you 
in the in the onset but then as long as you can kind of like get away they'll de-aggro they'll walk back a little bit and then they'll fall back asleep and um if you're having trouble with mimic chests that's definitely a strategy i've done that before I, uh it's been a while because the untead hunter charms they work really good there you go so really, I mean, the problem with these is that they're right next to each other. Depending on what kind of weapon you have, you could potentially just do one at a time. But, I mean, the problem with that is you could inadvertently attack both of them. So, yeah. Alright, what's cool is that I got another charge of Estus Flask, which is totally random. You never know when you're going to get another one of those. And, um, so, now it's time for the Yorm boss fight. And I think I actually did include some of the clip. Not all of the clip, but some of it. Um, because I wanted to kind of show you guys how cool it is when you see Sigurd. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, bro, it's so cool. I actually, oh, man. I don't know, I... I don't know. I like it, dude. I don't know about you guys. I like fighting this dude with Seagward. I think the first couple times, I didn't even know about the secret sword, the Storm Ruler. I never knew. I, ne I never, ever, ever knew. Obviously, if you don't do his quest line, he will not be here. Dude, Yarm should have been like a more difficult boss fight, like for real. I'm not sure why they decided to um, to make this kind of like a like a messed up boss fight. Yeah, you definitely don't want to get killed running for the sword, you know what I mean? And pretty much anyone can use that thing. Um, I think the requirements are like 8 or something. 8 and 8. And for the longest, I didn't even know how to do this. You just have to charge it. Once you have it charged, you attack. best to attack him when he's up though because then you'll you'll drop him down and honestly you can attack him when he's dropped down but when you have Sigurd with you then I mean you could just oh man that hit me see then then you can like stagger it at least try to. And he's basically that's it, man. Uh oh, uh oh. Gotta get the assist, bro. Oh, always go for the dodge. Never get greedy. All right, never get greedy. Get greedy, that's how you die. And then basically what's interesting is this dude is done for. And 
<laughs> then what you do? Well, the only thing you are. Okay, there's well, two. Actually, the let me go ahead and put come back. Okay, there's two things that can happen right there. After you kill Yorm, it depends if you've killed Aldrich. If you've killed Aldrich already, then you'll be transported to the Dancer boss fight. If you've killed the Dancer, you'll still go to the, bon the, the, the uh, bonfire. If you haven't killed the Dancer, then you'll immediately go to f kill the Dancer. So be careful of that. But um, otherwise, what you want to do is leave the boss or leave the, the, the area, the boss fight area. And then you want to come back, okay? If you've done the Seagward quest line, when you come back, that's when you can get all of Seagward's stuff. Now, not just the armor, but you'll also get the shield, which you've already got the shield, so you should have two of those. And, or maybe it's two of the storm rulers. I can't remember. I think it's two of the shields and two of the storm rulers. Something like that. But, point is, is that you get that armor. Oh, yeah, see, there's the shield and the. So get all of that. And you should have already another one of those shields. Interesting. And that's pretty much it. So, um, hopefully, you enjoyed this clip. If you have, make sure you like and uh, comment and subscribe and all that stuff so otherwise thanks for watching stay cool and bye everyone